good morning. It's day 16. I keep saying the day and I think I keep getting it wrong. So if I get it wrong, I'll, I'll correct it via text on the video. But we're in the car, uh, driving about an hour back to the trailhead. My trail angel and friend Dale there, <laughs> taking me back. Oh man, yesterday was a 24 mile day. And man, that shower felt absolutely wonderful. Had wonderful conversation and food at uh, Sue and Dell's house. Today, the plan is a 20 mile day. And we'll see how that goes. It looks like it's gonna be a warm one. Um, the days have been probably uh, 90s. Yeah, but under, under the cover of the green tunnel, it's not awful. But it is humid so we'll see what today holds we'll get uh we'll get back on the trail here shortly and uh chat with you then the wild stallion stick stallion I tell you, whoever blazed this path coming from 76 going south did a phenomenal job. Very clear directions on when to turn, where to turn. And there's a blaze probably every 100 yards or so compared to Walking through the Sisson community yesterday, there was a lot of blazes. You know, maybe it was just because I was tired, but uh, I could not make sense of the blazes sometimes. And I got turned around and probably walked an extra half or three quarters of a mile just because I thought I was supposed to be on a road and the path veered off instead into the woods. But so far, this section is incredibly well blazed. So this is posted private keep out, but the uh, BMT goes right through it. Uh, the homeowners allow internal food traffic. So that's very nice of them. Tell ya. Sometimes I like road walks, sometimes I don't. One of the greatest things on this trail about road walks is uh, you're not having to contend with all the spider webs and silk blazing that you have to do during in the trail sections. A lot of times the roadwalks are more, more exposed to direct sunlight, so you're not in the green tunnel. Uh, so you can, you can make faster miles on roadwalks, um, but uh, there's pluses and minuses to everything. Absolutely beautiful this morning. Give me another hot one. It's probably 70, 73, 74 right now. Getting started about 745. Already I'm sweating because of the humidity. What do you expect when you hike? Almost in August. <laughs> In, in Georgia, it's gonna be hot. And on, Day nine 
of not seeing anybody on trail, I ran across a northbound through hiker named Bones. So uh, I can start that count over, although I only have a couple days left, so that's crazy. I think the BMT is a trail for solitude any time of year, but certainly in the summer. Not many crazy people like me out here doing it. And, you know, although it creates more struggles with heat, ticks, and overgrowth, and I complain about those things sometimes, the reality is I hike in the summer because that's when our business is closed. We're very busy with northbound hikers at the hostel and southbound hikers as well. We would stay busy in the summer with section hikers, I would assume, but one of the reasons we chose this lifestyle is so that we can have lots of time off to really enjoy life. And, you know, right now that means getting out and doing a hike or two each year. We just bought mountain bikes and uh, I think bike packing is in our future as well. So you might see some videos about that starting next year. Totally different uh, mode of transportation, which will be interesting for us. But the gear we have for hiking will translate quite nicely. And I think we'll be have lighter setups than a lot of people just because we'll be used to um, traveling with everything on our, our backs. That dude is on full alert that he moves. A lot of times they have their head stuck in their shell. <laughs> Hi buddy, I'm not gonna hurt you. Just want a good video. Get you off the trail. There was a cyclist, mountain biker, that blew past me earlier. I would hate for the turtle to get crushed. It's the second turtle I've seen on the trail. That's kind of cool. Not much wildlife lately. Except for the deer flies, horse flies, both. Ah, got two nice heart pumping Leg burning climbs out of the way. About six miles in for the day. Beautiful trail section along here. From six miles from Highway 76 going southbound towards Springer Mountain. A while back, this pisses me off, uh, but it just shows how unassuming the start to the Pinotee is, but I blew right past the uh, northern terminus of the Pinotee Trail and uh, didn't see the sign or anything. A few miles later, I saw <laughs> Pinotee Trail 10 miles ahead or whatever, or behind. So I missed that. Sometimes I get lost in thought and miss things, even my turnoffs. It's one of the reasons I love long distance backpacking is you have time to just let your mind wander where it goes. I kind of sound like Bob Ross right now. Happy little trees along the trail. Just let your mind wander as you walk. There's a happy hiker walking through the Georgia mountains. Falls Branch, popular place on a Thursday, nice little overlook down there, deck.
So, that was a very busy place. There were probably 50 cars parked up all along this road. All of them exploring the trails up to the falls. It's great to see families out enjoying a sunny day. Looks like I got another road walk. This one not so shaded. So I put some sunscreen on. One of the times at Dell's I dropped off some gear. We'll talk a little bit later about gear failures, but I left my 360 camera, which failed. The accompanying super long selfie stick that allows the that kind of uh, visual that you get from the 360 camera. Uh, what else did I leave there? I left a sun hat. I could use the sun hat now, but you know, first first half of the trip I used it twice. So now it's just sunscreen and my little bandana buff, whatever you call it. What else did I leave? I think that's about it. But I dropped with all that stuff probably about two pounds worth of stuff that I was bringing that didn't wasn't using. So pack's been a little bit lighter since then. This is just country roads take me home. So picturesque. Some dilapidated structures there. Someone would probably pay a fortune for that barn wood there. On road walks, I like to walk going against traffic so people can see me coming. But usually when there's a sharp curve like this one coming up, across to the other side, just cause these windy roads, there's a lot of car clubs, motorcycles. They like to take these curves fast, sometimes without regard of what, not expecting a hiker is gonna be coming up around the corner. There's not much shoulder there. There's enough. I would have been okay, but you got to kind of hear them coming. That's all I need is a silent Tesla coming up, taking that corner about 50 miles an hour, flatten me against the wall. No thanks. Not sure if that's a statue or real deer. I think he's real. So just had a great lunch at Tacoa River restaurant. Very nice atmosphere. Kind of a higher end place, but you have a lunch menu. Had a chicken sandwich and some fries for 13 bucks. <clears throat> These uh, two places, about half a mile down, is this place, Iron Iron Horse Cafe, which is more of a general store and uh, a uh, a diner type restaurant. So that's a that's another choice. Also a tubing station here. People are tubing. And I got a little bit, another mile worth of road walking and the direct heat. So I'm gonna get back in the woods, which I'm looking forward to. Hanging with the rafters coming by. <laughs> On this road walk, there's a BMT Hiker Trail Angel box. Water. A little angel on top. Sign and open our guest book. A little free library. Hiker gear. More water. 
Very thoughtful. Paulina. How cool. Oh, this is what you get after the brutal climb up Brawley Mountain. Oh man, that was a challenging four mile stretch. It's two, two mountains you climb. You get a little bit of a downhill for maybe a quarter of a mile before you start doing this one. The first one was actually tougher than the Brawley Mountain one. Oh, just got stung by my third yellow jacket of the trip. I got stung last night too. No, the night before. Last night I was in a, in a house, but in camp I sat down. One had gotten up under my shorts. Not too far, thankfully. But it stung the heck out of me. So they took the last flight of stairs out so people won't climb up to the top of this thing. And though it's blue skies, there's weather moving in, thunder in the background. So I'm gonna at least get off the top of the mountain and uh, not dilly dally there. I'll take a break here on the way down once I decrease some elevation. This cause man, oh, that kicked my butt. I gotta say, so far, the whole Georgia section has been beautiful trail, clear, free of uh, difficult blowdowns, and just like this, you know, you got spider webs, sure, but it's been quite pleasant. You still have work to do, you have to climb, you have to descend sometimes quite steeply like I'm doing now. But trail conditions, trail footbed is outstanding. All right, so this is my water source. And you can tell there's water there. Um, it's not really flowing, it's kind of a trickle there uh, apparently sometimes there's enough flow to set the pvc pipe up so that some of it's flowing out and you can fill your water bottle or um, dromedary bag um, in this case i could not even though i could see the water i could have scooped it um, i have a half of a or a quarter of a Sawyer bag that's cut down to scoop out with but what I found was down here downstream a bit I think this is kind of slick so hold tight you can see the water's picking up a little bit of steam more trickles but you really don't need a whole lot of flow to fill up your to get your water, especially if you have the right tools. So what I found was a lot of it was being funneled down off this rock here. And so I figured if I could get it off that rock, that would be great. So the CNOC bag, which I have here, has a wide opening on the top. Hang tight. I'll try to do this with one hand. And so, so this thing opens up here at the top and gives you kind of a big mouth to work with. That dirt is on the outside of the bag, by the way. And then what you can do is just uh, stick that down in the water flow and you'll see it fills the bag up pretty quick. It's a two liter bag. It'll fill up in, I don't know, 45 seconds that way. So at first I was a little despondent because water has been quite scarce today. Uh, but I'm very happy to find this small sp spring. And even though it's a trickle, I will filter it and it will be delicious. 
and it'll keep me going. I got about one more mile to camp, and this is the last water until camp, so it's the only water I've found lately, actually. So, water lesson.